So it looks like there's a channel, a dude who heads a channel called Rebel Wisdom, who did an interview with Dave Rubin, which is pretty good. Um, I do recommend you check out the whole interview, but I do plan on doing uh, multiple different videos on this because there's some good information in this because there are indeed a good amount of questions that are indeed asked by the interviewer, and so I did want to talk about a few of these things. Now, in this case, the interviewer asks Dave Rubin, and he basically says, he asks him about the concept of audience capture because Sam Harris had also said something that was like kind of like a little comment about Dave Rubin and how he was basically captured by his audience and therefore kind of pandering and doing all the same, you know, SJW bad NPC garbage. Uh, over and over again ad nauseum to, you know, and again, it's the significance does not meet the proportion, obviously. Um, and he asked him an interesting question about that, and that leads Dave Rubin into also saying uh, a quote where he says that postmodern leftists uh, are the biggest danger to the country, not Trump, and uh, not even the alt-right, apparently, which is pretty crazy. So here you go. He doesn't think journalists should just sort of play devil's advocate for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. I think I agree with him on that, that actually... If I'm going to put a criticism to you, it should be something that I actually think mm -hmm. deserves a response. Um, and I do think a lot of the criticisms of you are are, are not true. They're they're bad, badly inten intentioned. And I think I think you're right in the terms of being an apostate. That is something that people really mm -hmm. really riles people. Um, but even Sam Harris has said in the past that he thinks that you might have been captured by your audience. And I, I feel that as well, just in the pieces that we're putting out. Mm -hmm. like YouTube has a certain bias, and I can feel... It's something that Eric had said, that the members of the IDW are free because they are independent of kind of organisations. I don't actually buy that because there is, there's a huge pull in terms mm -hmm. of the audience, in terms of what they want. What, what do you think of that criticism by Sam? Well... Well, I, I, I know that was in an article in something or other. I forget what it was in. Um, look, I suppose at some level, everyone that has an audience could have some level of audience capture. So I'm sure I could say that about anybody. I could, could I tell you that Jordan maybe has some level of audience capture? Does Ben have some... Look, Ben's audience loves it when he destroys a leftist on a college campus. So is that something that he might do more of, even if he doesn't think it's the most high intellectual work he could do? Perhaps. If, if Sam makes some joke about religion, is that going to get atheists to laugh? Probably. So we could all play that game. So without getting into the, the, the real nitty-gritty of that, I would say, look, if I, really, if, if I cared about audience capture to the point where I wanted this just to be about garnering a bigger audience to make more money and, all, and that sort of thing, I mean, look at the way we treat our YouTube channel. I mean, you should, anyone watching this could go look, and we don't do clickbait. We intentionally do things that I know are going to get us less views, which will ultimately get us less subscribers, but we treat the channel and the material that we put out the same way I treat the conversations here. So audience capture, I, I don't know, re I really don't know what that means. I, I don't know how I, I truly, I don't know how I could be more honest with my audience than I am being. When I don't know something, I am willing to admit that and I'm willing to explore certain ideas. So I think, yeah, I, I, there's no way that that can be answered that I think really can give a very satisfying answer other than I, I'm truly doing what I think is right. If people want to watch, if they want to support, they can. Um, can I tell you that there's no level of audience capture that I subconsciously can't even explain? Or the political PTSD you talked about before that yeah. you're kind of more focused on the left. Well, of course I'm more focused on the left. I believe that the, the, that the modern left, that the postmodern leftists, which now have taken over academia, which have taken over the media, which have taken over the political establishment of the Democrats, I believe that is without question the biggest threat to individual freedom, to liberty, and to human prosperity that exists. That is far bigger a threat than I think Donald Trump is or even could be. I think it's a far bigger threat than, than the alt-right or whatever that is. I think this idea, not this, this, this group of ideas based in a competing set of interests where we have to put black people here and gay people here and Muslim people here and trans people here and, and this ridiculous system, we, we, that will turn neighbor against neighbor. 
it will literally it will do that you will be walking down the street you will see your neighbor walking his dog and you will go oh he's a cisgendered white man he has privilege i should treat him this way ah here's a intersectional black disabled lesbian she should get this it, it's the most psychotic set of ideas that could ever be assembled and it is and it is a threat now it has actually become a threat to the left so if if having political ptsd is that i criticize the thing that i think is the most dangerous to Western society and to human freedom, then I gladly have PTSD, I would say. All right, so as you guys saw there, NPC number 969, Dave Rubin, uh, repeating buzzwords ad nauseum over and over again. And what's funny I noticed is that he actually dropped the term because in his AMA that he did, that was a total catastrophe, if you recall that, actually. He did an AMA on, I think it was the Classical Liberal subreddit, and it just totally went haywire because... A bunch of people actually actually asked him a bunch of difficult questions that that uh, fool wasn't able to answer because he's a doofus. And uh, he said that postmodern neo-Marxist, I believe this is what he said. He definitely either said postmodern, but I believe it's postmodern neo-Marxists uh, are the biggest danger to, to the planet or something like that. Now, I guess he's dropping neo-Marxist because he realized, I don't know even know if he realized it, maybe this is just an offhand sort of thing. But uh, those two things could not be further from each other because obviously Marxism was not a postmodern theory, it was a, it was a modernist theory. And uh, the, one of the key attributes specifically of postmodernism is basically a departure from any grand basic theory. So the concept of proletariat versus bourgeoisie, you know, that's not like, that's not a postmodern thing even in the slightest. In fact, it could not be more, you know, further from each other. And even this term postmodern leftist, I'm not even really sure what he's referring to because... There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, you know, I really don't think Dave would really be able to explain anything when you're talking about, like, philosophical movements and things. And so I'd like to hear him talk about that more. I would like to hear him explain who specifically he's referring to and what ideology he's specifically referring to. Or, you know, he, he does talk about the ideology there, but I want to know that what that idea, how is that ideology linked to postmodernism? And I'd, I'd really love to see him explain that because I guarantee he can't because he's an NPC bot who repeats the same things over and over and over again. But essentially what he's saying there is that SJWs are the biggest, uh, you know, threat to the planet somehow, right? So he says that the establishment Democrats are filled with people like that, like people who are saying that, you know, this uh, person of some identity should be treated better or something like that, like some sort of a race value or something like that law or something like that. Um, I really don't know what exactly he's talking about there. Are there uh, SJWs on college campuses and things like that? And is there mic feminism that exists? Yes, there is. But the delusional idea to think that that's either like the driving force of uh, you know a lot of these politicians or to think that it's actually some sort of a you know, big problem that we face is hilariously stupid. Um, SJWs on college campuses is obviously a purposely overblown issue. Uh, Jordan Peterson has admitted that he does that for monetary gain, so he basically has like a two-way trap, I guess is what he said, for SJWs, because either he spreads his videos and he gets more views, which that's not true, they wouldn't get more views, um, or they protest and he uploads that and then he gets money. So he's basically cornered the monetary gain on that, on that piece. And, and Dave Rubin is, uh, sifting in on the gravy train. You know, he's, he's getting his cash. He's getting his attention for talking about SJW bad, postmodern neo-Marxist bad. You know, I won't talk about Trump. And then they also talk about audience capture there, as I explained earlier. And Dave Rubin does make a point that, yeah, it is true that everyone is to a certain extent, um, you know, I guess a, a victim of audience capture, every creator out there. I think that, you know, even for someone like me, you know, there will be backlash from certain videos that I make. So when I first started making my uh, criticisms of Jimmy Dore, that garnered a lot of backlash. But I decided personally that my integrity was more important than some dumbass Jimmy Dore subscribers who would unsubscribe. And so I continued making the videos. And uh, I didn't let the, you know, sort of audience capture or whatever term kind of consume me, although I do know that other people are often, you know, kind of consumed by that and, and are plagued by that. And, you know, it's an unfortunate situation. But if you are to have any integrity, you would uh, get over this, quote, audience capture, and you would uh, maintain your sort of dignity and your ethics and actually talk about what you think is important. 
And the fact, guys, like, we have to really talk about something, okay? And the thing we really need to talk about is, and I haven't really stressed this enough, nor has it really dawned on me until now, Dave Rubin is radio silent. He is completely silent on Donald Trump, right? Like, when is even the last time we've heard him talk about Donald Trump? I don't even know when the last time was when I heard him talk about Donald Trump. But all of these horrible things that Donald Trump is doing, right, uh, that we see happening, you know, now he's, he's trying to do a coup in Venezuela, which John Bolton and other people like Mike Pompeo have admitted that it's literally straight up just for oil. Um, and we see all of these different things happening, you know, as the days go by, essentially. I mean, I think that they're trying to erase the identity of, like, the identity of a trans person being a thing. You know, they're, I just recently read something that they're basically trying to repeal the ACA as a whole, including the, uh, you know, uh, protection against, uh, you know, pre-existing conditions, discrimination. And they're just doing so many horrible things as the days go by. And obviously, it's a complete clown show and a joke. And we never hear anything from Dave Rubin. Remember, Dave Rubin was originally supposedly a single-payer supporter. Turns out he explained a system that was like Obamacare. And uh, it looks like he doesn't support that either at all uh, anymore, obviously, for obvious reasons. So I really have to say, and, and again, the, to talk about the audience capture a little bit more, um, you know, we know that he's a victim of audience capture, obviously, because he never talks about Donald Trump. He never talks about anything on the right wing. And remember, a really big sort of example of this is he had David Frum on. Now, I don't like David Frum. None of us like David Frum, right? He's a, He was one of the... Uh, People who is actually a cheerleader for the Iraq War. So he's a terrible person, of course. But he's a never Trumper nonetheless. And when Dave Rubin had him on, he was, you know, that was probably the most engaging that he's ever been and the most checking he's ever done. And obviously his checking was bogey, but it was to defend Donald Trump. You know, in any other situation, remember when David Horowitz was on his show and called Obama a communist, what did Dave Rubin do? Radio silence. He literally let him just continue going on and on and on. And then he basically talks about how, you know, no one in the mainstream is talking about this. Dude, like literally everyone on YouTube, okay, the skeptic community and virtually everyone on YouTube has been milking this gravy train for like five, five years now, basically. It's been basically five years that they've been milking this. The videos get millions of views. Ben Shapiro owns Snowflake Liberal or some dumb crap like that. that to act as if that's not mainstream in the sphere that we exist is hilariously stupid and it has been so beaten to a dead horse and the proportion of how much coverage it's getting to the significance is hilarious just imagine thinking just being imagined dumb enough and delusional enough to actually think that the people who control government now right the democrats you know at least have the house now but now there's even congressional subpoenas that are actually being uh they're not being listened to like steve mnuchin just yesterday and uh, I hope he's held, you know, in contempt of Congress and put in jail if he has to be um, to comply with the, you know, follow the law and comply with the congressional subpoena. But the point here is, is that the idea that the government, right, the president of the United States of America, who's, you know, kind of going into sort of a fascist government, essentially, so kind of walking into that direction, um, is not something that you would... Uh, consider a danger, and he even mentions the alt, right, okay, which is crazy, okay, that is insane, so the SJW bad, you know, minor problem that exists in proportion to everything else is somehow worse than all of the other things, which is oh, so, such a hideous thing, man, it's absolutely insane.